What's up guys? Okay, so today I was actually out fishing. It's cloud cover right now and we're kind of wrapping up the post-spawn post -spawn season going into uh, summer. Crop are getting in that deeper water, that 15 plus foot of water and they're starting to school back up. Um, so I wanted to actually do a how to find crappie during the post-spawn season video. I just want to do a short one kind of on a lake that sets up really perfect of talking about the percentage triangle again. I know I did a different video of finding crappie on a new lake and I kind of walked through the entire season or I walked through all the seasons. So pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, summer, fall, and winter. And right now I just want to do a video focusing on how to find crappie post-spawn. So I'm actually looking at a map right now and this map is a perfect setup of how crappie are going to move from their spawning bays to that, I guess, a mid-range mid, mid -range weed line um, between 8 to 12 feet. And then they'll push out to some of these points and suspend off these points um, in 20 plus feet of water, 15, 20 plus feet of water. So to start how to find these post-spawn crappie, I always, I always look for the, the spawning bays. Even though it's not even close to spawn, spawning season, that's where I'm going to start. Okay, I, I got to find the bays that have a, a large amount of shallow water. These bays that have a large flat of five foot or less shoreline. Um, this is where these crappie are going to spawn um, during the spring. And then I got to find next to those bays a steeper drop off somewhere. So on this, this lake map that I'm looking at, this little section, it goes from five to five foot in the spawning flats and there's a couple little points that it drops off real quick into that 20 plus feet of water and the reason that's so important is because crappie again are suspending fish if the bass or the pike are stacked up on these points even in, when they're in post spawn mode because they're looking for, for food as well uh, these crappie can suspend out into deeper water to get away from them get to safety so after i find the spawning bays the next step is find that first weed line whether that's in six feet of water or 12 feet of water, find that first weed line and that weed line edge because that is where these crappie are gonna be mixed in. They're gonna stay in the weeds, but for protection and safety and also for ambushing uh, bait fish. So I'm gonna do a couple different videos on what baits I'm gonna be using for post-spawn or what worked well for me in post-spawn. Um, but for right now, the weed line edge, that's been so key for finding crappie this, this spring during this post spawn season, whether it's throwing some sort of spinner bait, beetle spins, underspins, um, or throwing cranks, or just trolling tubes. Um, that's how I've been catching them. Um, so that's kind of that first step. If I can't find them there, and there have been a couple days where a cold front moves in, or you know there's a lot of fishing pressure, or maybe there's a lot of bass or a lot of northern pike pushing these schools into a, a safety mode, let's call it. Um, then I usually find them suspended off in 12 to 15 feet of water. I haven't found them any deeper than 15 feet. And when I say 15 feet, I mean the de total depth is 15 feet. They'll probably be five feet above the bottom or five feet below the, the surface. So somewhere in that range, they'll be suspended. They won't be right on the bottom, even during the cold front um, or a high pressure of fishermen or predators. So you notice in some of these other videos that I've done, the Berkeley minnow, I did the spin, I was throwing a beetle spin with that. I've thrown a beetle spin with some black and chartreuse colors. They've, they've been real hot this spring, um, that, that black and chartreuse pattern. But if you notice, I've been casting on the weed edge and trying to bring it right off the weed edge because these crappie will sit in those weeds, weeds to ambush bait fish. That's their job. That's, that's what they want to do. They want to ambush bait fish that swims by that weed line um, because bait fish obviously seek the weed line for protection as well so they're going to be swimming by there uh, but throwing beetle spins under spins have been a kind of a finesse tactic i haven't really used it for aggressive feeding crappie it's more of like a jig and then reel it in a little bit you know reel in five six feet of it let it sink a little bit jig it a little bit really hasn't been an aggressive tactic but then this year i've been using a lot of crankbaits um, whether it's shad color, bluegill colored, uh, different patterns, some fire tiger or perch patterns that have been working. Um, so, but I'm going to cast those. I'm going to set up in the shallow part. I'm going to cast those out towards the deeper weed line edge. 
and reel it back into the shallows. And now if I'm going back to this map here, there's a couple points. This first hump, this first point coming out of this bay here, this is where I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna set up actually on the inside turn, so towards the shoreline, towards the spawning bay. I'm gonna be casting out towards that first point and bringing it back and trying to find the weed edge. Now, how do you find the weed edge? Well, you gotta have a set of electronics or unless you're in very clear water, uh, then you probably could see it. But if you got a set of elect electronics, just a regular um, 2D sonar, doesn't need to be anything fancy. S something that's gonna show you the bottom and show you the weed line stacking up and down, um, whether it's cabbage, coontail, milfoil, lily pad. I mean, lily pads, obviously, you'll be able to see those, but uh, anything that's submerged, you're gonna need a set of electronics. And then you, you just keep trolling around until you find the breaks, until that weed edge stops, and then it just goes to lake bottom. Um, and that's where I've been setting up. And start in the shallows, cast out to the deeper stuff, and slowly bring it in shallow. And eventually, you'll find out where the school is, and you might be able to reposition the boat. Now, I know I, when I did the micro crankbait challenge, I was actually first set up a little too deep. I was set up in about 12, 13 feet of water and I was casting out into 15, 16 feet. And I caught a couple ones, a couple crappie, but they weren't that big. And I slowly moved back in towards the bay, in towards the spawning bay. And I set up in about eight, nine feet of water and I was casting into that 12, 13 feet of water. And that's when I started finding the schools of not only a numerous schools, but schools of bigger fish. Um, and again, these fish are not on the bottom. They're suspended down. So 13 feet of water, I was catching them probably six, seven feet down. Set up, start shallow, work deep, and keep working deep until you find them. Um, but always set up shallow. That's, that's how I did it. I wanna talk a little bit about the percentage triangle and how this kind of comes into play, how I found these little areas. And the percentage triangle, again, is just a kind of a, an idea to look at a lake map and give you a visual of how fish will move through that, that bay or around that point. And they use contour lines. This, this idea uses contour lines. And on this little bay here, I can see really tight contour lines next to the shore on this section, second little, uh, little point going out. And these fish, both crappie, bass, northern, walleye, you know, whatever's swimming in here, they're gonna use that as some sort of road map and they're gonna swim along these contour lines. They're gonna stay tight to these contour lines and move out to that point. Now the tip of the triangle is going to be far out from the biggest point here. And that's where these fish are gonna be in late summer, fall, and, and winter season. The big flat edge, or the fat part of the triangle, is gonna be in this bay, this large bay where it's about five, six feet deep, it looks like. Um, that's where all these crappie are gonna spawn. Now the middle part of this triangle, that's where these post-spawn fish are. Um, that's where this first point is, and most of the tighter contours are. Now, that's one big triangle. There's also a second, actually there's two, two smaller triangles on this little map that I'm showing you right now. The first one is the first point that comes out. That base of that triangle is right up to the point, and the tip of the triangle goes straight out from that, probably, I don't know, 100, uh, maybe not even that, 50 to 100 yards. And these fish will suspend out there because it looks like it's 20 plus feet of water. They'll suspend out there in late summer, fall, winter season. But for right now, that base of the triangle, the first spawners probably come into that point right there because it's close enough to deep water. It probably warms up the fastest and they don't have to push into the deep, to the far shallow part of the bay just yet because they want to still feel safe um, from both predators and weather, any cold fronts that move in. The second little triangle is off the farthest point. Now, they're not probably gonna be spawning on this point, but it's just good to note that these post-spawn fish might be right on the point. Um, and then the tip of the triangle will be, again, 50 to 100 yards straight off this point, and that's where these fish are gonna suspend late summer, fall, and, and the winter season. So I'm gonna walk you through what the weed edge looks like when it stops on 2D sonar. I showed you the map. Um, so yeah, let's go find some post-spawn fish. I'm gonna show you a couple baits. These, that's gonna be a separate video of what baits I'm gonna be using, but I'm gonna show you a couple baits that I'll throw for to catch these post-spawn crappie. But mainly I wanted to show you that weed edge break, what it looks like on 2D sonar, because a lot of you who do have sonar, that's, this is a very, um, 
2D sonar is what everybody uses now. So let's go find what the weed line break looks like on the 2D sonar. All right, so here's how to go about finding these weed lines. I'm just gonna kinda troll around this, this shoreline here. And that's what I'm looking for right there. That's the drop off of where the weeds stop. And they start getting pretty thick. Now, you don't have to have something like this. Actually, let's just do this. There we go. So this is all I'm looking for. I'm just gonna kinda weave through until it starts again and stops again. And you can throw buoys out if you don't have a GPS system. Like, if you don't have a GPS system to, that marks your, your path, you just throw buoys behind you. Might, uh, might be throwing a lot of buoys, but this is kind of how you find the weeds right here. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this. It's a little kind of bluegill pattern, crankbait, sunny pattern. Again, I'm just tossing it right down the weed line. Probably can turn this a little bit here. There we go. Just tossing it right down the weed line here. There he is. find a bit of everything. You really do. Not only do you find crappie, you find find these guys as well. They're all mixed in, bass, pike, crappie. Crappie will tend to be crappie will tend to be uh, trying to get away from these guys, but you'll find them mixed in. As my bed fishing video actually, I caught a pike on a crappie bed. The crappie moved off, the pike moved in, hit the lure. I cast it back out about 10 minutes later and the crappie were right back in there, so I hope you learned something. This is some. This is a philosophy I'm slowly buying into. This percentage triangle, finding these fish, specifically right now, post spawn fish. Um, so, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something, and uh, hope you put some slabs in the boat. We'll see ya.